Oh boy, Jake, we got to get a new WWE encyclopedia. Why, Scott? Vince McMahon just retired. Yeah, that doesn't matter. People can retire. The encyclopedia is still valid. No, it's out of date now. Oh, jeez, what are we going to do when people die? No, you can leave them in the encyclopedia. The encyclopedia is just all of history. It doesn't. All right, to- I'm going to need a sharpie. I'm going to start crossing some stuff out. Oh, I also should probably just tear out some pages. No, Scott, what are you doing? WWE Encyclopedia Seven today on Pro Wrestling Pauskies. Welcome to Pro Wrestling Palskis. How's it going, Scott Narber? It's good. Going good. How about you? <laughs> were you taking a... Were you taking... I was good. Was, did I catch you while you were taking a sip of your beverage there? Yeah. I'm just hanging out poolside, just relaxing. Everything's... Uh, oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, wait. Who are you hanging out there with? Is that Grandpa? Oh, I'm just hanging out with the fam, you know? Just can hanging you, out with the... Can you move your head so I can see Grandpa? Is that Grandpa? Oh, no. That's Dad. Oh... What a happy family. Oh, I see. Grandpa's there on the left. Oh, no. I thought that was Shane. That's really bad. (laughs) First, you forgot that Shane existed. (laughs) And the last one. And then now you think Um, everyone's Shane. uh, Hey, if you don't know what we're talking about, it's because you are not joining us live via the exclusive patron-only YouTube stream. If you want to get in on all this I'll say it. How dare you? How dare you? Get... Uh, get in on the action. Go ahead and join us on Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash PWPalskies, and uh, support the show. A couple bucks a month, it goes a really long way in helping us keep the lights on here, keep doing what we do, and you get all these sorts of fun perks like getting to join us, getting access to the pre-show, the weekly watch-along series, and much more, including the opportunity to be named PWP Champion, the current champ, is Gilbert Short, a.k.a. Goliathon, name and lights up above. He will defend his title later today, this very episode. Exciting stuff. I mean, it, is that going to happen today? Is that a guarantee? Or is this just some kind of some yes. kind of ploy where we just, just no. pull people along and it just doesn't even happen? He, I guarantee you, Gilbert Short will defend... That title today, um, and you guarantee me even take that. You can take that money to the bank. Wow, yeah. wow, that's the sort of promises we make here at Pro Wrestling Pals. So don't say that we're not putting it all out there. What putting other pod- out there? What other podcasts make promises about things that will happen later in the episodes? None of them. None I can't of name them. one. We can't name one. Only pro wrestling palskies that's you guys you're the pro wrestling palskies what the hell are we doing scott jake i could tell you what we're doing but i gotta ask you a question first do you want some breaking news oh we this is not the news week this is the week (laughs) where we just hang out but you know what i know i want some breaking news but we could think about it we'd be the first podcast to report on it in the future right because this we are recording this episode over a week from when you are hearing it previously. That's right. So We're on the cutting edge of tomorrow. What's breaking news of yesterday? So breaking news of yesterday. If we want to be really smart, Jake, here's the idea. We like take this clip and we immediately put it out there. Oh. You know? And you then mean, we're the first to respond to this to this news. Like, so like do actual social media marketing and attempts to grow our audience? Is that what it's called? I don't, we don't have the resources for that. If, oh. <laughs> if uh, somebody listening to this is like, oh, I would have done that for you guys. Reach out. Cause uh, we're reach out and touch us. We are sh- spread a little thin in helping the podcast grow. That's why we need you guys to be uh, retweeting the episode artwork that we work so hard on. <laughs> Cause it is Man. the only thing that we do to gain. <laughs> we are so bad at the advertising of the show. Spread out and thin is not anything I hear from anyone in my household. No, you sp- you're a man spreader for sure. 
On sandwiches. Ooh, not a mayonnaise spreader, a man spreader. They're different. I will yeah. explain it afterwards. Just go on. What's the breaking news? Jonathan Gresham has requested to be released from AEW slash ROH. Gresham requested to be released uh, from his contract on Saturday. The request was made prior to ROH's death before Designer pay-per-view. And he had lost the world championship to Claudio Castagnoli in the opening match. Uh, and Fightful uh, reported that, uh, quote, there was a lack of communication between the company and Gresham leading up to the weekend. Gresham was felt, uh, said to have felt disrespected by this. Among other things, we learned that the lack of time for the world title match was a tipping point as well. And Fightful noted that Gresham finally met with Tony Khan before death, before dishonor, and was said to have communicated the frustration that led him to cussing out Khan. Wow. By the way, cussing Khan, great t-shirt idea. <laughs> Cuss you, Khan. Cuss you, Khan. Oh, oh wait a minute. Or, <laughs> all right, this is a, we go Wrath of Khan. We go Star Trek 2. Yep. And it's Gresham on the ground screaming, Khan. <laughs> <laughs> the same way that Captain Kirk did. Mm-hmm. Our Over graphics the fallen department. Somebody. Our graphics department will be it's the spread. His, his fallen bank account. I don't know. What is he? You know, he's angry over lots of things. So this was a, I was with my buddy. We had watched it, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on? This seems weird." Well, I guess it got weirder backstage with the Gresham going, "Hey, you can stick this somewhere, and I don't like your attitude, and blah blah blah." fucking cussed him out good for gresham to stand up for clearly what he believes in whether or not it's you know justified i don't know it seems a little justified to me that especially against tony khan he is the longest running tenured ceo of a professional <laughs> wrestling company oh shit can he even do that legally <sighs> yeah wow so yeah this is this is that's great this is pretty big because i'm sure by the time this all unfolds like gresham will have done something you know and all this so it's a I just wanted to mention it for those Palskis that are in our live chat that they can react along with us. That's that's nuts. Um, Alex Pierce in the chat um, responds with what I assume is his version of how you would spell out how I say, ew, <laughs> ew, boy. Ew, boy. It is E, 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 O, 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 H, 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 B, U, 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 O, 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 I, B. Boy, ew, yo, boy, not bad. We're we're two days removed from Vince McMahon retiring, and a wrestler. I believe you mean a week and two days. <laughs> well, uh, sorry, actually, I mean a week and one day. Then we are one day away from Vince retiring, and then a wrestler going. You know what? I remember how it used to be. I'm a fucking cuss out a promoter. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's like, yeah, it's fuck, 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 the, fuck you, fuck this, fuck, you, fuck all this. I'm out. I'm done. Do you, so think, do you think things have changed drastically since Vince McMahon is retired? Do you think he gets a phone? You think Gresham gets a phone call from Triple H <laughs> like immediately? Hey, what'd you say? It's, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> you want to come over? And, uh, we have a guy here. His name is Braun Breaker. Don't don't ask how many K's are in that. But I'm thinking that you and him <laughs> one on one for the NXT title. Does he also not have multiple ends in Braun? Is it not like oh, BR? Shit. Is it not like a Jeff Jarrett? That's what I assume Braun Breaker is. That's like no, but he has two O's. Double N. B R double O. B R double O N double B. He has two B's in the beginning of Breaker. That's what's crazy. Double K, not triple K. That'd be bad. E R. Braun Breaker. Um, well, thanks for that breaking news. You're uh, welcome. Incredible. I just wanted to let everyone know the landscape has changed drastically. Before we get into our ever occurring most fun segment as a way to lighten things up from last week. Right. WWE Encyclopedia. Yes, it is Encyclopedia 7, of course, the new edition of the Encyclopedia. Um, and uh, I'm going to mix it up this week. We did this once before, but there is a delay in the live stream. So this always takes a minute. Uh, I would like the f uh, first person in the live stream to pick a number uh, below 415. That's the page that we're going to do. We'll just let the we'll let them pick. Okay. Okay. So the first person right. in the live chat to pick a page, uh, a number between what I'm guessing is. Let me see when the actual information starts, so they don't pick one like a jerk. Um, page, 
page four and four hundred and fifteen. A number between four and four fifteen. We'll go ahead and open right up to that page. Um, and that's going to be the page that we what we dissect. Sometimes these episodes end up going really long, Scott, because we try to both get a pick in you and I. I think this yeah. is a, this is a nice way to just circumvent that from now on. I think so. Do you want me to go um, over the breaking news again? Would that help? No, to fill time. No, but I I will say for those, Jonathan Gresham, the, the author, the author, Jonathan Gresham. Yeah, yeah, he's he's like, hey, lawyers, um, fuck you with lawyers, right? That's not the it's not the ship guy, right? That's Clancy. The ship. Why I, is there no wrestling Clancy's? That's a good fucking name. There has to be a wrestling with the last name Clancy. I don't think or a first so. name Clancy. All right. Clancy, like that's a good I think a last name of Clancy would be good. I mean, you know, the 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 podcasts, the late great podcasts were Cody and Clancy. There is a Cody, it's a very well known wrestling Cody. There should also be a well known wrestling Clancy. Are you looking it up? Because now right. I'm looking there's, it up. There's there's not a well known one because I looked it up here. And so far what came up is Fancy Ryan Clancy. <laughs> yep. Yep. Fancy Ryan Clancy. There's also Cade Clancy. Um, there's a, oh, what happened to my search? Bobby Clancy. Bobby, Bobby Clancy. <laughs> Bobby Clancy. I can't, you can't put Bobby in front of it. Uh, also, I feel like Teddy Long might have said that at one point when trying to say Bobby Lashley, he might have gone Bobby Clancy. Um, who was, who was fancy Ryan Clancy? Cause that is a great name though. Well, he's on YouTube, so he can't be good. Oh, it's a new guy. Yeah. There was a classic wrestler can't named be. Mike Clancy. Christo- no. Christopher J. Clancy, better known as Mike Clancy, um, was a professional wrestler, a sheriff, and a businessman. He was a uh, sheriff and a businessman. Yeah, he was a wrestler in like the 1940s, old school, real, real, real big old wrestler type. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that not enough time has passed. Nobody's picked a number in the chat, so I think that that whole that whole attempt was just a failure. I think. Yeah, so much for the rebrand. So much, and you know what? It's Sapowski's fault. There's people there. I see people. How much? How big is this delay? Again, Alex Pierce. Are literally, they still hearing about Vince McMahon retiring? No, because no, I'm watching what they're watching, and they're hearing me talk. Uh, look up, look up, Mike Clancy. We've already mentioned this. So clearly, uh, the live stream not paying attention. This is why we need Maybe they new hate you pod listener. Oh, I know they do. Hashtag Jake ruined the show. But, um. So I guess with that said, I'm just going to go ahead and do it myself, Scott and Arbor. I tried. All right. Don't make it. Don't make. Don't let you think I didn't try. All righty. Here we go. I'm going to stop right there. Right there. That's where right we there. are. All righty. So we have opened up to page 158 and 159 for those of you keeping track. Can't wait for the chat to flood you with yeah. page 158 yeah, or 159. Exactly. Uh we are deep in the eyes and to the left page to 158, an entire spread on the Iron Sheik. Mm. And on the right, we have Erwin R. Scheister, Isaac Yankum, DDS, <laughs> Isaiah Swerve Scott, and oh. the Islanders. Oh, I am surprised that Isaiah Swerve Scott is in this book. 2014, huh? Um, yeah, no. me too. Wait, 2014. Is that when this book came I out? I thought that no. you said I thought you said there was a 2014 edition. No, I think it's 2024 edition. 24, yeah, 2024 edition. I know. I Future feel like edition. we're having the same conversation we have in all of these, but I think this one is yeah. more recent than that. But I still, I mean, I it, thought it has you said NXT a date, and, and I for some reason I, I I hung my hat on that number uh, that I was holding in my head. You were probably apologies hearing, hearing me talk about the pages. Um, let's see if there's a print date on this book because I feel like we've done this once before and I do not find it anywhere um, if only somebody knew there it is in the back of it it states uh, this American edition 2020 first American edition 2016 so this book yeah, is the from Canadian 20- edition is 2014 so it's oh, always that, that's why that's why it's that exchange it's exchange rate yeah it's two, yeah. it's in, in dog in dog books that's yeah. the year is different anyways so this is from 2020, and I guess I still feel like uh, having Isaiah Swerve Scott in here. I feel like that's fantastic. That he was probably that was probably the height of NXT pre-pandemic, obviously, of him entering the company and like being prevalent. Do you like him? 
Um, I, I, he has, I think he's one of those guys who needs a person backstage to really help tell him what he needs to say and do. I don't, I think he's a good mm-hmm. wrestler. I like watching him wrestle. I think he's got a lot of potential, but I think he's been inconsistent and I don't blame that on him. I blame that on whoever's backstage booking it, writing it, producing the, uh, producing the, uh, I almost said episode, <laughs> producing the, the match. Well, I, I got a chance to see him live at, uh, let me see, I believe he wrestled on double or nothing in like a triple threat tag team thing. Okay. And there were certainly moments where he had these little transitional weird spots where he does like these little flurries of stuff, right? Like he does these little kicks or little punches to basically put someone down or prone to then get up and jump or do something spectacular, but they all don't register. Okay. They don't register to a crowd. And I don't know if it always registers to the wrestler because it's not, it's not loud. It's not making hard contact. He's doing light attacks, but if they're not forceful enough, the rest of them might go, sorry, what'd you, what'd you just touch? Right. Was that my shoulder? I don't know where to. Right. How do I sell this? And then he does a big thing. So all the moments in between he, him doing the big thing I've seen it on TV too, where I go like, I don't I, know what happened. I can visualize what you're talking about. Like, even though I don't know that you explained it precisely, I still get it. No, it's that, I certainly didn't. It is that like, it's a thing that you see a lot of times, even like before or after a pin, when someone kicks out of a pin and then the wrestler tries to get right back on them, but the person being pinned, it doesn't realize that they're being hit. And so they're not selling yeah. it. Yeah. Cause it's either from or AJ Styles or, has his flurry. That he does, right? Like right. when he ended up knocking Mrs. Teeth out where he does like the punch, this, that. Yeah. Sometimes like it ends a in the back fist. Backward yeah. kick. And then, yeah, it, it, it's that. But AJ connects on his flurries. Right. So, you know, they're all coming. Tajiri did it flurries of kicks. Right. Yeah. Um, but they all either he's slapping his legs so hard or so, there, there's there's still a register of like, I know what he's doing or he's consistent in how he's doing it. So I know where they're supposed to be. Isaiah's Heck, so even, inventive. I think it's also almost a detriment because he's not being consistent in, uh, I'm going to do it this way for a while. So everybody knows what it is. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Um, I get that, but I think that also just comes with, you know, uh, still a young wrestler and, yes. and, and also because of, uh, maybe where you saw him or the, the level that he's at, not always wrestling the same guy over and over again, not having the same match. So you never know how good anybody can communicate with any of their opponents on any given night, what the history is, what the chemistry is. He's always wrestling in the same place though. Yeah. I'm told it's always Swerve's house. <laughs> I thought that like, I, I didn't know you legitimately have me thinking like, Oh, he, does he have an exclusive contract to a specific thing? I know now he's in AEW, but um, yeah. Anyways, uh, but yeah, I don't dislike him. I like him. I think he's got a lot of potential. I agree. I think there's a lot of potential. Nothing is connecting yet for me with him, but he's currently the uh, AEW tag yeah. team champion along with Keith Lee. I like, uh, I, I think Swerve is a very good name. That's a good wrestling name. Like the, there's something about it that feels kind of modern. I'm surprised that we haven't heard it before, but it's like, it's more modern slang. But at the same time, it like, I don't know, it, it has like a, I don't know, it just sounds good. So I feel like that's going to be very helpful for him in his career. There are a lot of wrestlers. So you're thinking like Swerve Clancy would be a better name. Swerve Clancy. Isaiah Swerve Clancy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Or on our shyster would look and go, oh, that's a terrible name. Swerve Scott Clancy. Oh. It's actually not bad. That's actually not bad. I that's do think Isaiah bad. is a wonky wrestling name. There's something about like a dude with a, a an Amish name. In wrestling. That's another That's Isaiah also kill. in AEW. It, it, it dawned on me Wait, a, really? week in, a week and two days ago. Yeah, Isaiah Cassidy. Oh, shit. A private party. Right. It dawned on me the other, in, a week and a day ago where I was like, holy shit, there's two fucking wheelers in AEW. <laughs> I don't know how I didn't put that together. Uh, but there's uh, Cash Wheeler and Wheeler Yuta. Wow. The name Wheeler is used twice. How is that ever possible? And they say AEW was going to be the land of new and original ideas. <laughs> <laughs> They've got 45 storms. They've got six cages. 
They've got four pages. They've got nine Clancy's. It's unbelievable. Um, yeah, he's, he's he's Taz Clancy now. Did you know? Taz Clancy. Uh, Tony Griggs in the chat uh, di- did not pick a page, uh, but did say he actually owns the Swerve name. That's fantastic. Uh, so Tony Griggs does, and yeah, he's yeah. lending it out to him. Yeah, what yeah, a, yeah. Tony Griggs, nice fellow. Yeah, Big Riggs. Big Riggs owns Swerve name. It was the name of his Big Rig company. <laughs> so uh, Swerve Riggs. But that's actually, you know, I didn't think about that because he is just simply. Wait, is he Isaiah in AEW, or does he just go by I, Swerve? He says Swerve a lot, but it, uh, when they initially introduced him, it was Isaiah Swerve Scott. I want to look at the AEW roster page and see how he's listed. That's a thing that Jake has never said before. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, like I, the enthusiasm of like, I want to look at AEW's oh, right. roster page. Oh, man. The, the, the image they're using of Thunder Rosa. Somebody in the graphics department really needs to learn how to cut, how to mask images and cut people out. Because it's just like a white glow around her. Um, so it just says she's oh, angelic. Okay, the name of their tag team is Swerve in Our Glory. Unsubscribe. Yeah, them being on their own. I, I'm I'm being very polite and not derailing on them, but uh, their ideas of doing stuff and promos and everything, I've found to be quite terrible. <laughs> swerve in our glory that doesn't even make sense that is neither does anything keith lee says on the microphone can it's I say, astounding but can i say swerve in our glory is the most wwe tag team name in all of aew yes that is all of the truth combinations um team, it's worth it's worse anything yeah it's worse than all of that swerve in our glory Ugh. That was terrible. Uh, but so uh, on the on the roster page uh, yeah, for lost. his entry, it's Swerve Strickland. Yes, yeah, Swerve. See, so but he's not Isaiah. A commentator, yeah, but commentators throw it out. They've there. screwed it up <laughs> because they're not all they on the say same it. page. Uh, but there's a lot of pages. To be fair, yeah, I never there's got you pages. got it before me because I'm still I'm still scroll scrolling down. I never got to it's, Swerve scrolling. I I said it. That's what Tamina says. Um. Yeah. Uh, Soon this whole roster page is going to have so many fucking titles on people from the ROH championships and, and the AEW championships. Everyone's going to be a champion. It's going to be like the WWE 2K22 game when you could just right. give everybody. It's like, ah, oh, they're the main dollar champion and they're this champion. And this one, we have the hardcore titles in my roster. And then we also have the mm-hmm. old Intercontinental, the new Intercontinental. We have USA, TNT. The NWO spray painted in, in, world title championship. The, don't forget the 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 internet champion created by Zack Ryder. Um, oh, I forget it. So let's talk about uh, two other people on this page who were really tentpole in my childhood wrestling, and that mm. is Erwin R. Scheister and Isaac Yankum DDS. Who would you like to begin with? Your choice, your pick. And let's talk, let's talk Irwin because he's at the top of the page. And he was one of my favorite heels as far as like I legitimately hated him. Not in the way that I liked booing him, but I like he was I did not like him with every core of my body as a child. I did too, but I'm a little older and that yeah. turned into I'm not gonna watch him. Oh, okay. So that was the the detriment. And I, all I just saw was like, why are you wrestling in those clothes? I mean, why are you wearing suspended? Why are you wearing, Oh, my God. I hate this guy. Oh, he talks about taxes. That's what my parents deal with. I hate him. I am hate him so much. I mean, uh, I'm eight years old when IRS debuts and is at prominence for a little while like that. I mean, I'm the best possible age. I'm 34 at that time. Uh, wow. It's, shit. It's not good. You're I'm surprised we haven't gotten a se- I'm 77 retirement tweet out of you. I, I well, I just started tweeting recently, so <laughs> that's true. You did just make your triumphant return, and I say triumphant to be kind. Um, uh, IRS, I do think though, is one of the more successful of the everybody needs to have a job outside of wrestling era of wrestlers. Yes, and I think it's exclusively because of Money Inc., because of mil- his association with Million Dollar Man. 
Yeah, had it just been a tax guy, that certainly would have been a detriment. I think also he, Mike Rotunda, capitalized on, all right, I'm a tax guy. My name is IRS. Like, I'm solely invested in taxes. Like, I'm going to carry that through in my promos, how I walk to the ring. Right. He embodied boring tax guy. Right. Not to the point where it was, it was too boring and he couldn't do anything, but he, he wasn't, he wasn't running through the crowd. He wasn't overly energetic. It's just like, oh, he looks like a tax guy. I fucking hate him so much. He, he, it was, it was great work by him. Right. Like he managed to, to walk that fine line. Um, I have photos of a, a live event that I went to in 2000 and or I'm sorry, in 1993. And I was trying to remember. So this would be the only time I got to see him live would be my guess. Cause I didn't go to a lot of wrestling when I was a kid. Cause you know, that was a luxury Cause taxes because taxes. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm trying to piece together from the stills. I have what the match was. It seems the participants in the match are IRS, Mr. Uh-huh. Mr. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Scott Hall or Razor Ramon and Diesel, and it seems like Mister Perfect and Razor Ramon are a tag team, which sure. means that no. Diesel. Oh, you think those two are the tag no, team? It's, well, I have a photo. Let me here. Let I me, would think Mister Perfect and IRS are the tag. That's team. That's what I would have thought. But then there's this photo that I found. Um, let me see. I'll I'll slide it into the window here once it opens so people can see it. That are look. So I found this image. I'll put it right over my face, <laughs> so that it's just you reacting to my face. If it's obviously there's a little bit of a delay. So okay. But I found this image, which looks to me like they were the tag team. Um, and it is you know it's it's Mr. Perfect with one uh uh of his straps down. Letting a little, letting the, you know, doing his particular nip, nip slip, uh, hmm. uh, patting Razor on the back, which means that this is probably post match and they probably lost. Um, here is Razor in the same corner of what looks like Mr. Perfect behind him. Uh, and then, yeah. And then, uh, let's see. Uh, nice and photo then of butts. Yeah. And then there's, there's the beginning of the match where IRS is getting yelled at by the ref. I don't remember this ref's name, but I always liked him. He was a good looking guy. Sorry. Sorry. Pe- yeah. Podcast listeners who can't see this. And are, uh, this is why you got to tune into the live. Stream. Well, I, I would hope you post these in our Facebook or something. Yeah, like yeah. I'll put them on the discord. That's the spot for this sort of stuff. Um, but anyways, I do remember just hating him here. You're trying to look at closely to see who this ref is. I think that's Danny Davis, Danny Davis. And that's definitely Fink announcing him in the background. No, that's Lillian Garcia. <laughs> wow. Before she had her hair transplant. She glowed up. She swanned for sure. Yeah, she, she's Isaiah Swerve's swanned. <laughs> Isaiah Swan. What if his name was Isaiah Swan Scott? Oh, that, no, no good. Um, But anyways, IRS also, you know, uh, part of a, a wrestling family lineage. The father of Bo Dallas and Bray Wyatt. And Sister Abigail. The father-in-law of Jojo. That's right. <laughs> and you know, something too that needs needs to be said, he he is someone that I've meant to watch more of. And uh, I know Peacock and all that stuff is a sure. little iffy when it comes to stuff, but he's I've I've heard so many people talk fondly about his previous career before IRS is like, yeah, 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 yeah. You had to see him. I'm trying to look up the name of the group because I don't remember it. His the pre IRS days. Yeah, it's not the varsity. Uh, I'm I'm looking it up. Sure. So that's fine. It's uh, uh the varsity club. Varsity that's club. It. So him gotcha. and Kevin Sullivan, where it's they're the amateur wrestlers. Like they're they have the amateur wrestling credentials. And then it's, I think Steiner, Rick Steiner eventually joins in there. And apparently all that stuff that they did was just outstanding. Like there's this outstanding wrestling group and they did cool stuff and they were just well super cool. I, and that was him and arguably in his prime. 
if we watch WCW's Chai Town Rumble from 1989 available on Peacock. Yes, yes. Um, the Road Warriors versus the Varsity Club. Oh, it might not be long. Oh, <laughs> it might just be. It also might. Uh, it also. It also uh, might not done. be those two members of the Varsity Club. It also might not be IRS. Very true. Right. Um, that was just the first thing that came up when I looked for Varsity Club uh, Peacock. But that's that's one I, I've been meaning to yeah. to work into the list because I always think about it. And I go, we got to watch some Varsity Club. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I would love to add that to the watch along list. Um, All right, I'm going to so, actually make note of that now. Um, here's a uh, <laughs> Tony Griggs in the chat says, I still can't believe they fired IRS on tax day. Was that is that real or is that kayfabe? No, that was real. That's, That's real? What, those the April fifteenth firings. Oh, right. His uh, when they let him go recently. I'm sorry. I thought this was like back in the day at IRS. No, I think this is 2020 yes, during the big the pandemic cutoffs because yeah, he was working as a producer, if I'm not mistaken. Probably yeah. yeah, and it was it was fucking tax day. It's like oh, uh, IRS on tax day. All right, I have a question for you. What yes. was IRS's signature maneuver? The audit? See, that's what it should have been. Because he's he works for the IRS. Do you want to know what the IRS doesn't like? Write-offs. Uh, receipts. No, they love receipts. Write-offs. It's a write-off? That's what his signature move is called. The write-off. That doesn't make any sense. He would hate the write-offs. audit doesn't sound good. Uh, for sure. Like, sure. He hit him with the audit. Yeah, that's Like, you true. really have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He ought to move out of the way next time. I mean, that's what. Ooh, the extension. <laughs> um, uh, how did he hold titles in WWE? Because I'm very surprised at this tag team titles. And those are that's the only one. I don't know why in my brain I was like, oh yeah, he had to be like an Intercontinental Champion at some point. Or There's no money in it, Jake. <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah, no, I was trying to look at something. There's not a lot in here that's uh, that's like... Um, Where's he from? That also has to be funny, right? Washington, D.C., of course. The IRS. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. literally, he's from the offices of the IRS. I guess you can't make him from Fort Knox. That doesn't sure. really seem fitting. But I bet I bet that was tossed around, though. They're like, where's there a lot of money? Right. Um. Uh, but anyways, I do want to specify here, though. It just says that... Uh, uh, he made it into the finals of the 91 King of the Ring where he met Bret Hart uh, soon after he joined forces with another superstar who was inf- infatuated with money, million dollar man. And as a tag team, they were known as Money Inc. They took out an insurance policy and acquired the managerial services of the Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, as one of the most cunning duos in history, it says. Money Inc. soon had their first taste of WWE gold after winning the World Tag Team Ch- Championship in 92. So here's a dude who debuts in 91 Tag champions in 92. End of his run, late 93, early 94. Yeah. Right. Is that a question? Yeah. I was trying to think if you, if you kind of remember, if you just checked out, cause I know you oh, were watching. That, that's yeah. That's kind of what I checked out, but what a, what a great thing for Ted DiBiase for the sake of, Hey man, you've been wrestling for a while. Like he clearly goes, all in when he does it and he's probably hurting. It's like, Hey, we got you a tag team guy. We got to, we can keep this money thing going and it'll lighten your load a little bit. So that's, you know, seemingly like a, a solid thing to do. Like yeah. we're going to, we're going to keep your thing going. It's not going to enhance it to like, you're going to be the world champion and it's going to, it's going to be a gigantic catapult, but we're going to make sure you can keep getting paid and new stuff and lighten your load. You know what though? Uh, a thing on here that I forgot about that is, mm-hmm. that's really great. That makes me want to rewatch it. So he was, he did linger around until 95 and his okay. last, his last big thing that he did um, on the main roster was um, when he joined the million dollar corporation and uh, DiBiase was feuding with taker and IRS was uh, repossessing takers grave sites was he using Repo Man? I sure hope so, because he was the last big talk on the last episode of Encyclopedia, and this would branch the two together, making this a two-parter Repo Man Encyclopedia. Oh my god. The, the repo, Where is that footage the yet? The Repo Man of saga. IRS repossessing Taker's tombstones. We also talked about the um 
We also talked about the Legends Battle Royal and the Gimmick Battle Royal that we would confuse each other a couple, you know, maybe a month or two ago. He was the runner-up in the Legends Battle in Raw's 15th anniversary, which is what I confused for the Gimmick Battle Royal that I thought they had done more of. Oh, well, good for him. Um, Do you feel like there is the same sort of generational love for IRS as there is for other second generation superstars parents? Or do you think that because IRS wasn't the dusty roads, wasn't the Ric Flair, um, wasn't the, you know, uh, Jim, the anvil, Nyhart even, uh, that like, we don't, it's sort of like, yeah, Bray is his kid, but who cares? I feel like people go IRS. He's pretty cool. Like he's, he's all right in my book. Like he was memorable. A lot of, a lot of what you had to say, it's like, Oh, I hated him. I didn't like him. And I know I I'm, I think I'm more in the minority where I was just on the outs and there were characters that I, I wasn't into. Um, you were at the, you were at that age where he was a bit, this was a bit too corny. You were starting to get to the age where you needed stuff to be really cool for you to like it. Like all, you know, that all the preteens and teens start to get. Yeah, it's it, it became dopey to yeah. me. A lot of the guys that I already liked weren't around. Right. Um, and I I was having issues with Undertaker, so clearly I wasn't right. I I wasn't long for this this version this of product. it. But I think a lot of people liked him as the heel in, in the way you did, and thought he was cool. And then the super nerds like the Varsity Club, like knew him from that, so they're like, yeah, this guy's awesome. And then they see Bray and Bo, and they're like, yeah, great. This is a great wrestling family. Like they, they've, they've all got it going on. Um, yeah, I think that we were not going to get the like moments that they, that other second generation stars get with their dads because of the characters that his kids play with the exception of maybe Bo. We can make it work, but, um, we could have done it. Yeah. We could have put a segment together. It's like, Oh, we got this. Sure. I mean, like, especially if, Working under or growing up with a dad who's all about money and corporate greed created the fiend. Come on, that's that's a good story right there. Well, can you imagine that all those times when it's Bray Wyatt had 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 the lantern Bray Wyatt, uh, you know the whoosh, yeah run. the Cape Fear one. Yeah, that one had that one kept going for a while and doing that. Like, he, there's going to be a Raw or a SmackDown that's happening on April fifteenth, right? Right. So one of those days when he's coming out there, he's going to do something. He's going to light the lantern and then fucking W2 pops in front of it. And then then just the face, like he turns and goes, huh? And then pay your taxes. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that's great. Can make it work. And then, uh, and then why I could still go uh, run, blows out the lantern and then flees the tax man. Uh, I think that that works and should have worked continuously. Um, Well, from one guy who has a career outside of wrestling to another guy who had a career outside of wrestling, let's talk about Isaac Yankum, DDS. Oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, Isaac, Isaac, not Isaiah, but Isaac. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just I'm also dissecting that name going Isaac. I Yankum. Is his initials and his last name. I yank him DDS. A good is, old vaudeville stooges name, you know? I mean, just like IRS, Ir- Irwin R. Scheister. Not only is his ni- initials IRS, but his last name is Scheister, known for somebody who shists. <laughs> like, this, these are the corniest fucking... This is... I don't know why, but... Lawler was hired at this time and doing commentary and then, like, doing... Any no. Youngman jokes, right? Yeah, absolutely. This is you're right, like vaudeville sort of like tongue in cheek, like oh, he is like the circus act of like, yeah, I don't know, it's ridiculous. This is the yuck yuck era. Like, oh, his name really is like his name is Paul Paul Bearer. Like, all right, do you fucking idiot? Any- <laughs> I mean, of all things, we talked about it last week, like Dorink the Clown. It it wasn't bump the clown or it wasn't yeah his name wasn't like you know um squeezy our nose or some shit like that <laughs> like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. The, he managed to get a normal name amongst this group well they did give them you know i don't think shyster 
let's see. Okay, are these real last names? Are Shyster and Yankum last names that people have? You gonna look on Facebook? Where are you looking? What is oh, this? that's a good idea. Facebook. I wasn't even gonna do. I was just gonna Google, but yeah, let's look up Yankum. <laughs> <laughs> How many mutual friends does Jake have with Yankums? Um, there I, I do not see a single Yankum on on uh, that comes up. I do see some Yanks, Y A N K E or y- Yankee or Yankee, maybe potentially, but no Yankums. And let's see if there are any shysters. I guess Facebook is like the modern day open up a a phone book. I suppose shyster. Now, there are lots of Schusters. I remember actually going to school with a, a, a girl named Schuster. She comes up as one of the people on my things, but no shysters. Schuster, not a shyster. Yeah, no. So neither of these are actual last names. So they don't. They only get so much credit for having real first names. Also, we never found out what the R stood for in Erwin R. Shyster, which I feel like his name could have been Richard. His name could have been Erwin Dick Shyster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. I. 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 Ideas. Um, but anyways, Yankum, not a real last name, but it worked enough to where it's the bit, the vaudeville bit sounds like it. <laughs> Yankovic, Tony Griggs says, do you mean Yankovic? Yankovic is probably the closest thing to Yankum that exists. Yeah. Um, well, in any case, how do you how did you feel about Isaac Yankum? How did you feel about terrifying dentist character? I was introduced to Isaac Yankum DDS via I would imagine most people my age through WrestleCrap.com. Yeah. There was a, I was working at Radio Shack at the time <laughs> and we had internet access and we, we briefly had you, they, they had it long before I was there, but it's like, you could just throw movies on and just watch them while you're working at the store. Right. But then that stopped and it became all about like, all right, nothing's going on afternoon after after 12 o'clock everybody came in for two hours that were covered in paint and had like working hands they all look like quint from sure. jaws and like i got a electro four eight rotator cuff that i need a new bulb and it's like there's a wall of this shit that they need and i right. have no clue our manager in the back would sleep and then you just go wake him up and go he needs a thing and then he'd go to the and wall and point. know exactly right what that dude needed, you're ringing up for a dollar nineteen, yep. and then they leave, and then after that, you get the occasional mom buying a cell phone for a kid right. that when cell phones were fairly new. Or I feel so like there's nothing to do. In I between. feel like RC cars was the only thing I ever cared about at Radio Shack. They had some cool RC mm-hmm. cars. I remember buying the Javelin. It was a six wheeled RC car. You just inspired a memory of a thing I haven't thought about in twenty fucking years. <laughs> that was the only place where you could go get RC yeah. cars at that point. Like they had gone away from Toys R Us and stuff and it became the Javelin was six wheels. It was three on each side and the two in the middle were the two that spun and you could spin one side front, one side backwards so it could do just spin in place perfect three sixties. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't know whatever happened to that vehicle, but I love the shit out of it and I jumped it off of all sorts of crap. Very, very durable. I love it. Uh, I'm going to tell a side story of just one of my favorite things ever. Okay. Uh, Cause we were encouraged to sell stuff, right? We were encouraged sure, to sell cell phones and sell warranties on stuff. And then you, we got to kick back and all that stuff. So uh, this is at a time when pagers are starting to be phased out. Right. Cause cell phones are, are coming into play. So a guy comes in and my buddy Tate is there also a wrestling fan throughout the ages. Um, and we would love to look at wrestle crap together because we both missed pockets of stuff and be like, sure. what? This guy was real. But a guy came in and wanted to buy a pager and a cell phone. Okay. And my buddy Tate was helping him. And my buddy Tate is very straightforward and just very, he can, he can talk to anybody. You can put him in a room with a bunch of bikers. You can put him in a room with a bunch of librarians. Like he can just, he's one of those guys who right. can talk to anybody. So he's talking to this guy and going like, well, no, the cell phone essentially does both. Like you don't need a pager and a cell phone. Cause if someone's right. paging you that, you know, the cell phone will do this, it'll let you know that who the call was from. Or if you get a text, like it has all the functions of a pager. You don't need the pager anymore. Right. And the guy's just like, I need a pager and a cell phone. I need to be paged. And then I need to be able to call them right away. Right. And then my bike take goes, do you have two toilets in your house? One to piss and one to shit in. <laughs> oh my God. I love him. Cause he says, that's what you're trying to do right now. Right. That's and amazing. And the guy goes like, 
Oh, I'm not buying anything from you then. Walks out the <laughs> store and leaves. It's like, what is wrong with this guy? He he made it as clear as he could. So He's also trying to save him money. Yes. That's yes, hilarious. exactly what he's trying to do. He's trying to help him out in every single way and just broke it down and the guy wasn't having it. So I, I, I'm just always very fond of that story. But uh, So anyway, so that's how you were introduced to IRS. Is... Well, through Isaac Yankum DDS was Russell Crab. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, yes. It'd be like a weekly or a monthly update that would showcase a new thing on the site. Okay. And then they do a write up and there'd be like little shitty, not Winamp, but the other one. What was the other video thing oh, that would right. load up? A real player? Yeah, like real player and shit like that. And you'd hope for audio or video of something. Right. And you'd hurt. The, I think the big thing that they played was this theme song. Which I is just a dentist you. drill. Oh, right. I was going to say, I couldn't even tell you what it was, but that makes sense. So the, and of course the only audio is pulled from a show. Right. Of so course. it's probably off of VHS. So it's. <laughs> boo. <laughs> and Vince going like, here he comes. Oh, he's evil. Isaac Yankum. <laughs> Look at those teeth. Yeah. Dude. All that stuff. And you're reading about it and going, uh, evil dentist and they show his teeth and they're so bad and Lawler brings him in and you just can't believe that this was brought in put on television brought in as the muscle for uh, for Lawler against one of the greatest wrestlers of all time Bret Hart this was Bret Hart this was brought in because Bret Hart needed somebody to fight and they went <laughs> dentist with shitty teeth let's throw wait, what, best excellence of execution a, a seven footer yeah seven foot dentist although according to the not according to the encyclopedia six foot ten two inches shy oh six foot ten well yeah um well so basically a monster and you go well the monster has a day job not you could have taken i'm trying to think of somebody who else who would who would be debuting later around this time that's that's just sort of oh like a like hey we we got this guy uh He's known as Al Snow, or we're gonna we think about calling him Leaf Cassidy and making him a new rocker. No, make him the fucking evil dentist. Right. Why not him? He's got the long hair. Um he's a, a more normal sized human. Not the not the giant dude. Yeah, I don't know. I I like this. He's gonna have a terrible back working on everyone in the chair <laughs> that can only go so high. He's gonna have to bend over and get in their teeth. That's You'd hate that job. Tony, Tony Griggs in the chat. You know DDS was bad when even the mayor hates to talk about it. <laughs> I don't know. I I liked it. I was like, and he yeah, talks it. about all kinds of terrible shit. I think that I think that this fits in the same way that Doink the Clown does. Evil dentist and evil clown are both fun horror archetypes. Obviously, not done in a good way in this instance, but it could have worked. I, by the way, I love the logic that the fucking book writes. It says, according to Isaac Yankum, he let his teeth deteriorate to show rotten toothed idiots. Actually, it says rotten teethed idiots. I'm sorry. I auto corrected it in my brain. Rotten teeth <laughs> idiots. The dangers of bad oral hygiene, it says. Also, it says that there was a match I do not remember here. That was Bret Hart versus Isaac Yankum DDS in a steel cage match with Lawler suspended from a separate cage above the ring. That's got to be a fun match. Does it? That's a watch along. <laughs> That's going to be my, when I get September, when September rolls around, we get to the September misremember because I didn't remember this match happened at all. So there we go. Okay. It fits the theme right there. So this is not a movie podcast, no. but I looked up to see uh, when Dr. Giggles, the horror movie came out. Are you familiar I, I, with I'm from, Dr. Giggles? I've never saw it, but I'm familiar with it. Yes. It's great. It's fucking great. It won't scare you at all. It's just super cheesy. No, it's it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like campy comedy horror. Yeah. Um, it's far more. So it's yeah, like, good. what, which, which came first? Cause it right. definitely has some vibes of Dr. Yeah, yeah. He's not a dentist, but, uh, three years before yeah. Dr. Gills came out in 92 and, and Dr. Or Isaac Gingham DDS came out in, uh, 95, June 26, 1995. Interesting. There could be some inspiration there, assuming that Vince has ever seen a movie. <laughs> right. That wasn't no holds barred. It, imagine that's the one. Right. It's like, oh, I'm home alone. Like I don't all my pencils are out of lead. Uh I have no more notepads. Everything's closed. 
Might as well just turn on TV. Dr. Giggles. <laughs> I love it. That's some good shit. I'm going to make an evil clown and an evil dentist. I am doing great. Um, well, anyways, Isaac Ankum, obviously wrong guy uh, would obviously go from one of the worst, uh, gimmicks to, you know, one of the best and let's leave being mayor. What a gimmick to being the, uh, to being a poorly opinionated mayor. Um, we also have the Islanders on this page. Can, do you know which two were the Islanders? Is it, is Tonga kid one of them? Hmm. I don't know if he's a different name. Not that's not that it's not called Tonga Kidness. No. Okay. Then I don't recall because I think they're also '90s guys. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, it's it's Haku and Tama. <sighs> Let me see who Tama is here. I'm looking it up again. It's he's one of those faces where I go, yeah, it's that guy. I've seen him a billion times, and I you know, but a lot of these names were. Uh, often yeah, changed. That's Tonga Kid. That is Tonga Kid. So Tama is Tonga Kid. Yeah, Tonga Kid got to do a lot of stuff. Like I, I always liked Tonga Kid, um, because he's also in Body Slam. Oh, movie with Piper. It's him and Piper. Like he's got a starring role in the movie. Nice. Um, and he's. He's one of those guys where he's got a face where, yes, he's got, he can do the crazy eyes and look evil and bad, but he's just a good guy through and through. Like when he smiles, even when he's being evil, it's like, that's a fucking great smile. Right. That is a, that is a baby face smile on that guy. So I always liked him, but I feel like he never really got his due. But whenever I'd, I'd seen body slam stuff and I, in my mind, it'd be like, this guy should be huge. Like I always liked him and Haku. I didn't get into till way later. Um, right, Haku was right. always weird to me. Yeah. The, um, my only memory, my only memory of these two is the Matilda story where they stole Matilda. And I was very upset about that. <laughs> the British bulldogs bulldog. Uh-huh. And I was like, don't you don't fuck. Don't steal Matilda. That's you've gone too far. <laughs> like that's not was there a pet in WWF that they could have stolen that you'd be like, that's OK. You could have taken Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Coco's Coco's already got wings. He's, he's a bird himself. So birds. OK. Yeah. yeah. Dogs. No, go. Yeah, no one cares about birds. What about the snake? Oh, no. Snake? Well, they wouldn't. Have, you know what? Yes, they could have stolen him because the snake probably would have like bit him and they would have been like, ah, that's what you get for stealing the snake. <laughs> Never trust that snake. Never trust that dynamite. That dy- the whatever his name was. Damien. Um, <laughs> the dynamite. The Damien. dynamite Damien kid snake. Uh, yeah, the Islanders. I feel like the other problem, too, is I think they're, a lot of those teams have a the something or something or his name. And I get them confused. How do you mean? Well, the wild Samoas. The, oh, okay. the head shrinkers. The Islanders, the Blanker. Like, I know, I feel like they're all kind of, I can never. <laughs> Not the Blankers. I can never remember which one, which group of two is which group of two. Yeah. And I apologize. The, I know this sounds racist. Uh, it was at a time when I was a child and these characters were not distinguishable enough from one another for me to remember. I apologize. Hey, I fully back you on that. I don't, I don't, I don't feel it sounds racist. I remember Wild Simones because they were, they were the first introduced to me. Sure. The. The often see the hair, like that, the hair that one sticks apart. and eating the fucking fish right. and all that like that. And they were wild. Like they had a descriptor in oh, it. Oh, that's true. So that's, I think that's what separated Cause if there were other bulldog teams, you go, why? No dynamite kid and British bulldog. I know those guys. Right. Cause they're the British ones. So you throw, you throw a descriptor in. It makes sense. Like Islanders what were some of the other ones you mentioned. Um, the head shrinkers. Head shrinkers, yeah. It's like, yeah. We're, we're what kind of head shrinkers? Right. Like the the big head shrinkers, the angry head shrinkers. Oh, oh. what more specifically? Yeah, I, what head? Ex- but it's the same reason why I had to look up the Islanders because I go, I don't remember what distinguished yeah. them from these other groups. So it wasn't. I don't think it was a long running thing, right? Was their reign pretty short? Um. Yeah. It was. Um. A couple, Tonga's replaced a with couple years. Andre? Yes, because eventually Haku and Andre would become tag champs. 
Um, yeah. But it doesn't specifically say when they started. All it says is when they ended, which was April uh, 88. So if they were around in 85, 86, mid 80s, it was only a couple of years probably. Well, Tonga Kid's another one going on the list. I love me some Tonga Kid. Yeah. So we're going to um, be watching some Tonga Kid. So we don't have a ton more time here, but the last person that we haven't chatted about uh, that the Encyclopedia Gods gave us today is the Iron Sheik. What did he have to say about Vince McMahon retiring? Let's check Twitter. Oh, shit. That's a great idea. Um, have you seen the documentary? The Iron Sheik documentary yet? I think. No, you've asked me about this before, and I've, I've considered it, and I, I haven't I haven't done it yet. It is an entertaining watch, to say the very least. Um, let me see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up to see if it's available anywhere so that we can be. <laughs> so that we can be. I have it on Vudu. Oh, you do own it. Okay, then never mind. I was going to tell you where to find it. On June 22nd, the Iron Cheek tweeted, the wheels on the bus go fuck yourself. <laughs> that is the that is the single greatest fucking tweet I've ever heard in my life. The wheels on the bus go fuck yourself. <laughs> Just no context even. God damn, that's the greatest Twitter account on the, ever. We, we've we been talking about this for a while. The next time you are here in person, I we I really want to do an entire episode just of the best and worst wrestling Twitter accounts. And the reason why I want that to be you in live in person is because I want us to just to both have our phones out and just encourage listeners to just be searching for wrestlers. <laughs> Tony Griggs in chat. God, I love his Twitter. It's so good. Uh, let's see here. So Iron Sheik has, there were two comments about Vince. He said, only one Kennedy McMahon. I love you forever, Bubba. Okay. In response to, you know, quote tweeting Vince's tweet. And then another, uh, that someone asked, what's your favorite Vince McMahon memory? Showing the tweet again and saying, watching the genius take over the whole world. He make me his world champion. He is forever my champion. I always love the Kennedy McMahon. Right on. So his yeah. handler is very, very, uh, you know, emotionally attached. Memorable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, very, very I mean, the, the Sheik is one. The Sheik is like, you know, we have people in wrestling who surpass the genre and become something else, and then you have the Sheik who may be the best representation of wrestling and that's ever existed, <laughs> like. The Sheik is everything that's wrong and right with wrestling all at the same time. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's the the truest of circus acts, the the, the ultimate carny, um, big larger than life to his detriment, but also what makes him uh un. But not because he's still relevant and loved sure, and sure. talked about, and but he gets away with it because he owns it. Yes. Yeah. He says horrible and things been, and does horrible things, but it's like he's a scrappy fighter from Iran that may or may not have won an Olympic medal, according to him or the rest of the world. Uh, and just a tough fucking guy. I mean, you figure he's been living this same gimmick since 1970, because <laughs> since 1970 is when he came to the States and uh, and really started like, you know, cultivating who he was and becoming uh his you know uh, starting his road to wwf mm-hmm. yeah Unless and uh, it was, was it wwf still at that time potentially i don't know when did that happen well there's there's a fun stories i'm truncating it and not getting it exactly right but when he was signed to wcw um he went you know he's got some crazy contract that they signed him for he has a match or two. They're terrible. They send him home. Right. He gets paid for a whole year. He has a contract in which if they don't do anything, it rolls over. And everyone forgets, except for clearly Sheik, like he knew what he was doing. He kept quiet, gets paid again. Right. An ungodly amount for another year. And they're like, oh, no, why do we still have him? He was bad. And I think they try and call him up and do something again with him. And he's, it's just bad. And they're like, send him home. Right. So he just is a guy where it's like, yeah, he's 
as you said, a, a great carny. Yeah. The epitome um, of, of the wrestling carny for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I love in the book, it has like, you know, just the actual article itself with like the fine, the regular print and paragraphs. And then it just has this one random few lines in bold, just in the middle of the paragraph here. And it just says Russia, number one, Iran, number one, USA, fooey. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how do you not love this guy? <laughs> it's so fun. Like, does, you know, we talk about the, oh, is it out of date? Can you do it anymore? The. The ooh, foreigner bad. Right. Right. USA good. He, I know I keep saying this phrase, walk the line. He oh, walked the line of it. Oh, absolutely. Really, really well, where he made it. He was so prideful of Iran. He said, Iran is so great. Like, I am great. I am from Iran. I don't like you. You boo me. You're terrible. You're, you're awful. Right. Like, he did it really, really well, where, Sure, where they're just people right. going like, fuck you, you're from somewhere well, was, else, I don't like you. And it was like also you. like a timing thing because of the Iran hostage crisis that was happening at the time. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of like real world implications into the USA being like, boo, anybody who says Iran is is number one. Um, But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I highly suggest everybody watch the documentary. It's real fun. It's real easy to watch. And you know what? I stopped looking at it because... Because you were like, oh, you own it. But that doesn't mean that the listeners all own it. Let me figure out. You're going to buy it for them? <laughs> I'm going to buy you. If you become a patron, it comes with the uh, the documentary. Let's see. I want to see if it's available anywhere. It's currently available on Prime Video and Tubi TV. I'm sure that's like a free with ads situation. So you can watch it for free on Tubi. T-U-B-I. Two B is just one of those things. It's real fun. It's not like you know. It's not gonna be one of those. Is it fun? It's not sad. Um, it's no. I don't, I wouldn't say that it's entirely sad. I would say that it's like it's entertaining. Like things about it are just gonna always inherently be sad because you know a guy who's a legend because of his delights. Yeah, because of like, but like he is he's captivating and he's joyous. Even his sadness is endearing in a lot of ways. Oh, I love all the baby. I love you. I love you. Like that. It's just yeah. like, I, <laughs> yeah, it's, but it, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a good watch. Um, and, uh, he was on an episode of Kenny versus Spenny. One time. Did you ever wow, watch that show? I haven't thought about that show in fucking ages. That's that show's just amazing. That show is for wrestling fans. Right. Flat out. Like, and they had a, they had an episode. I think, yeah, it was on the Canadian version because they did like three seasons in Canada before we had a U.S. version of 10 episodes. Right. And there was one of who could be the best pro wrestler. And never seen the episode in full, but Iron Sheik comes to visit. Oh, that's so And fun. he's grabbing at Spenny like he wants to fucking ruin him, but he's already he can't walk well at that point. Um, but like he's he's fucking lunging for him like, ah, fuck you. Ah, I'll kill you. You piece of shit. You know, all that stuff. And Spenny's just going, he's out of his mind. I'm he's been crazy. I'm curious if that's available anywhere as well. That How do you watch that these days? You used to be able to buy it on you iTunes. You buy it on Amazon. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I think it's all on YouTube. Breakthrough Entertainment on YouTube. I think the entire series is available on YouTube. So the Canadian one oh, or the US one? I don't know. It just says that's season one, episode one. The US one, right. the US one is 10 episodes. Um, and then the Canadian one, I believe, was three seasons. Well, and I have some of them on DVD, not all of them. You can watch whichever one was made by Breakthrough Entertainment. You can watch all on YouTube. That's probably the Canadian one. Probably. Uh, we, Comedy, Comedy Central yeah, yeah, was. Yeah. Uh, Viacom probably owns the other one. Um, well, another fun journey through the encyclopedia. But it is time before we get to the hotline to have our monthly Championship Palski Battle Royal current. Oh, shit. Current PWP you know champ Gilbert Short, a.k.a. Goliathon, is defending his title for this, the month of August. Scott, do you want to explain how this works to people? I, I well, you got to look at Goliathon because I hear Jonathan Gresham is now in the running. <laughs> so, and he's pissed. He will cuss Khan and he'll cuss Goliathon. So, if you become a patron of a certain status, our championship uh, status, then you every month will be entered into win 
the the have the opportunity to win the rumble we put your name in a jar amongst all the other names and then we shake it up and we pull it out and there are wonderful prizes you'll be highlighted in the chat in our discord you'll be a champion you'll have your name in lights and you will get to pick a watch along in our watch along series on patreon you will pick the match you will pick one of the illustrious matches for whatever reason. You love it. You want to make us watch something that we don't want to watch. It's some match that means the world to you. Whatever it may be, we've had a great many matches so far in our selection. And uh, am I am I leaving anything out? Um, no. You get obviously a, 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 a free shirt of your choosing from the shop. Oh, you get yes, your yes, name, swag. You get your name and lights up above us on the stream for the entire month. Um, and of course, you get to sleep easy knowing that you're doing your part to support this program and uh, we're doing uh, our part to show appreciation and giving something back. That's ultimately what this is about. We like to give a little something back, make it fun. And uh, so without further ado, Scott Narver, would you like to see what's uh, going on in the Rumble? Heck yeah. We got more people popping in the chat right now. Oh, they're, 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 they're waiting. They're excited. All righty. For this moment. So here it is for the month of August. A name has been selected. Oh. And new PWP World Champion Masked Llama, aka Spitz, re uh retaining, no, re what's the word? Reclaiming the W nope, the PWP championship. <laughs> Had a total brain meltdown there. Congratulations, Mass Llama, um, on your your victory. Two time champ, I believe now. Yes, yes, indeed. I love that we have like this title lineage that we can follow. Um, mm-hmm. thanks, to- but don't worry, we'll be revisionist someday too. <laughs> oh, we're just gonna start making it up as we go. Yeah. Um, it's what the it's what the good wrestling companies do. Great job, Mass Llama, and uh, thanks to everybody who is a championship palski for your continued support. We hope you'll continue to stay championship Palskis. Keep your name in this running. Um, and uh, yeah, look forward to seeing what Mass Llama has in store for us for the watch along. Keep your eye on your emails. We'll send out an email on all the stuff. You're probably familiar with it at this point. Thanks to everybody who continues to support the show. All of our Patreon Palskis. Um, Before we wrap this up, we're going to go do some hotline calls. So uh, thanks to those of you tuned in live. Scott Narver. Say goodbye to the live stream for the day. Goodbye, live stream. I'll see you in the Discord. 747-666-5606. That is the number to the Pro Wrestling Palskis hotline. You can also send a voice memo to hotline at pwpalskis.com. Scott, you want to see what we got in the hotline this week? Yes. Memos, mails, bring them all. Pro Wrestling Palskis. What's going on? It's Tim Redbeer from Connecticut. I hope everyone is doing well, trying to stay cool. I know it has been so very hot in Connecticut and perfect timing for the AC to break. So, you know, I'm sweaty, which is not unusual, but, you know, more so than usual anyway. So my question for you today is, would you rather? Would you rather be the Universal Champion or the WWE Champion. I hope you're all doing well. Take care of yourselves and I'll talk to you later. Tim Redbeard from Connecticut. Uh, champion, WWE Champion versus Universal Champion. Uh, which one would you rather be? So basically, do I like blue or red? <laughs> and do you know which one is which? <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. Uh, yeah. Ooh, wow. Shit. I really don't. I, I think I gotta go WWE. I mean, in, in my opinion, and I know this is very arguable and debatable, but WWE title is the one with the lineage. That's the one that, you know, not the with this instance, have, if it was great to have title, you could argue that, but universal well, again, is what? Like four? Five that's what old? I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That one doesn't have any lineage. I mean, that one has a couple of years. At least the WWE title, one could argue, is is the old world title, is the old WWF championship. Like it is. One could argue. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. So that that one has. I a don't lineage. fucking argue it. I'll fucking shut oh, well anybody then, down. Then why did you argue it when I said that just now? 
I'll argue you. You You must have misheard me. Um, So that's got to be it. Like, it's got to be the WWE title because that's the one that matters. Unless you go, well, the universal title is going to be short lived. Right. And it's going to be a weird title. Why not be amongst that group that there are only so many universal champions? When you think of universal champion, who do you think? Who comes to mind? Daniel Bryan. Really? Brock Lesnar is the first person that comes to mind to me. I don't think about anybody else. I couldn't even tell you who else held that title other than Brock Lesnar. Wait, who had the was the hemp championship? Was that the universal that was, championship? No, that was WWE, I believe. See, we don't know because they look the fucking same. No, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it was WWE. I don't think that was Universal. Let's look it up here. I'm trying to think. Oh. Well, obviously Roman because Reigns was oh the fiend was. Yep. All right. Danny Bryan, Universal Champion. Uh, I got news for you, buddy. There was the universal title. It looks to be. Wow. It looks to be. It's made out of hemp, Uh, right? Yeah, I guess so. The WWE Universal Championship. Um, Well, here, why don't I just do this? Um, And by the way, I I think I know why. Don't do it. I'm not. I'm looking at uh, uh, Wikipedia really quickly. Most reigns Brock Lesnar. So that's probably why I think about that. Um, uh, let's see. History. Because it, it keeps showing up with it. God damn it. I don't want this. Just give me the, and the belt's really hard to read. <laughs> Close up. <laughs> sure. Because it's right, made so out it of. So inaugural champion Finn Balor vacated. And then it's won by Kevin Owens, Goldberg, Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns vacated Brock Lesnar, Rollins, Brock Lesnar, Rollins, the fiend, Goldberg, Braun, the fiend, Roman, never Daniel Bryan. I am right. Daniel Bryan never held the universal championship. Okay. Um, But I don't know. I feel like that, that lineage, even though there are some, you know, names on there that are nice, it still just feels like, yeah, this is just like the recent WWE top guy title, but it doesn't feel like it's important. Agreed. I'm trying um, to make a case for it, and I thought maybe the Daniel Bryan thing would help. Turns out yeah. it wasn't the case, so you got to go WWE Championship. It's yeah. it's just not sure you could go like, I'm the guy who's going to make that title. No, neither of us are that guy. Yeah, agree. Good Gold, question. Though. Goldberg will come back in January and take it from us. Absolutely. Yeah, Mass Lama is going to get his, his title next week. we only supposed to do one Battle Royal a week. Or a month, rather. But for all we know, next week, Goldberg's going to show up and just take that title right from Mass Lama. Hey, Towskies. This is Chris Daria 7 from Fort Worth, Texas. Hope y'all are having a great, great day. It is hot as all get out over here, but that's not stopping me from calling in, especially about the wrestling biopic episode that y'all did. That was a fervent episode. Great job. I got a couple of things that I wanted to throw out there. I have... uh heard some interviews with some folks that are very interested in making wrestler biopic movies. The one that stands out, y'all were thinking about who should play Randy Savage. I'm going to throw one out there because he's super excited about doing it and actually wants to call the movie Savage 2. That would be Joe Manganiello from True Blood, How I Met Your Mother, Magic Mike, that guy. Uh, also, Paul Walter Helzer of Cruella, Richard Jewell, a bunch of other stuff, has talked about making a movie, not quite a biopic, but an event about the Four Horsemen, uh, basically a night in the life of the Four Horsemen where he plays Arn Anderson. I don't know, I don't remember who he said he would play, Ric Flair, but basically it's a character study of what the partying lifestyle of the Horsemen in the 80s does to a person, and it sounds fantastic. I hope he gets that made. So, I kind of want to keep the conversation going. I know y'all talked about doing another episode, but I'm going to flip the script a little bit. Uh, what event do you think needs, in wrestling, I should say, do you think needs the dramatization of a film? Uh, easy answer. Sound like the Montreal Screwjob, the Monday Night War, stuff like that. But go deeper. Go deeper than the obvious. I want to see what y'all come up with for uh, a movie about a special event in wrestling. All right. Y'all enjoy. Keep doing what you're doing, loving who you love. Peace. Chris Daria seven more great feedback on the wrestler biopics episode. I mean, this is not a movie podcast, but people 
Hot topic, though. A lot of people have been calling and writing in the Discord. About yeah, this. they've been in hot topic. They're calling from there. They're writing from there, going like, "Have you guys seen the shirts that they have? There's a lot of bands here, and some AW stuff." Yeah, it's uh. So clearly, we we struck on something. Maybe we need to do a, another episode. But I, I looked up the interview you talked about with uh uh Paul Paul Walker Hauser. Yeah. And he love that guy. Love that guy. Oh, Jesus. Get a room, you two, or go to Hot Topic. It's not it's not a, it's not a returned love. It's it's unrequited. Oh. Well, yeah, he did show up at an AEW show and you haven't done that. So I can see why you guys don't like each other. He is quoted as saying, I think that if you put me and Sebastian Stan as Ric Flair and Arn Anderson in a four horseman movie and then you cast Ethan Suple, Suple, Suple. Yeah, Ethan. I always thought it was Supley. Ethan okay. Supley, but it might be Supley. Nice. No, Another great actor. As Ole Anderson. Oh, that would be great. Then you get someone whacked out of their head, like Ben Foster or Emil Hirsch to play Tully Blanchard. It would it could be really cool. They'd be great. I mean, this is fantastic. This is such a good idea. Um I love everything about this. Now, Paul Walker Hauser is a big boy. Um, who did he say he was going to be? Arn? Arn. Or Tully? Who did he say? Arn? Um, There's a side-by-side you know, side picture, and someone, they did, they did him right over at WrestleZone. It's like, all right, you, here, I'll, I'll send you the link, and you, you do with it what you will, but, um. The only, the only thing I'm not so sure about is Sebastian Stan as, as Rick. That's tougher. That's a tougher pill to swallow, because I feel like Sebastian Stan is a specific type, and it might just be because I recently watched that Pam and Tommy show, and it's going to be hard to get that type of rock star out of my head versus like the the 70s rock star that i picture uh oh you just sent me this picture so the helicopter dick here. rock star um but everybody else but everybody else i feel like it's pretty great yeah no this is great yeah this is they did they really did a good job god damn it you made me open up wrestle zone and now it's like you have to pay to see this shit what yeah what do you have to pay um, to see I don't know. It just did that thing where it pops up and it says like, you need to turn off your ad blocker or pay to see this. Pay, pay, give it money. Um, no, it might get it. cool stuff. No. Um, but yeah, I'm all for it. Also, I just want to say, um, Joe Manganiello as, uh, as a, a, a savage is fantastic. And if he's, if that's something that he's Hank, like really gunning to do, holy shit, Hollywood, let him do it. He would be so good. He's such a nerd that you know you'd get it right. Like he's like a legit. He's a D and D guy. Yeah. Like he is all about character and nuance. You know. I so? haven't seen. I have not seen a lot of Joe Manganiello. Okay. But the times I have, I've gone. Oh, I'm not into this. And that's uh, not okay. to say that it couldn't be because we're never going to see it him as Deathstroke. And I love Deathstroke. Right. I saw that Pee Wee Herman Netflix movie. That okay. the I didn't see that yet. The movie was awful. And Joe wasn't any better in it. He was played himself okay. and it was made such a point of like, it's Joe Manganello. Joe Manganello's here. And he's just there. And it's like, right. oh, this isn't enhanced by whoever he is. So again, haven't seen the big body work. So when I hear him as Randy Savage, I go, well, hold, hold on. I'm not on board yet. I just, I just can visualize it based on all of the characters that he plays as a dungeon master. When like he like because you can watch D and D sessions that he does he he's I he has something can. I think it's called like the I think it's called the Hollywood D and D club or something like that like it's like a very like you know it's all, all these celebrities that he gets to come and teaches them how to play D and D and he I, I've it, heard like, Big Show talk about it yeah oh okay so the, like I definitely I definitely could see it just because he's really good at character it's work pretty up there though right but he's also got the look too like have you seen him with the kind of crazy beard. Like he could probably literally play Savage through the years. He could probably play the young Savage with a little bit of makeup and like shaving him clean. How old and is then, he? You know, like he's got to be 60s? in his fifties, late fifties, early sixties at latest. Joe Manganiello. Let's see here. I have it right here. Actually, he's forty. Oh, he's only forty-five. That dude seems. You don't look that's what, it. That's anymore. what happens when you look like a man. When you look like a grown ass man, and I still have a man child's body i assume everybody is at least 15 to 20 years older than me <laughs> he's only a few years older than me oh that hurts that really no hurts. it's like gray beard and everything he looks like he's in his but 60s the, yeah um well there's also this like the one photo where his beard is like 
this was the photo that I'm seeing. Of course, I could just show you on the thing, but like that's the photo I'm seeing with this crazy yeah. beard with him and his wife, Sophia Vergara. Yeah, she's holding him but, up, it looks like. Um, I'm all for it. I, I, I signed up. It would be this. crazy. Here, here's the crazy part about it, because he was in the sure. original Sam Raimi Spider-Man. The same right. movie. Yeah. Of a bone saw. He probably met him. He probably met Bones. Probably so. not. Um, thanks for the call. I think we have one last one for the week. <gasps> All right. Hey, Palskis. Wyatt from Cali here. Just calling to respond to last week's topic of biopics that we would like to see. Now, I have two, but I don't have any actors for either one. But in both cases, they just have a great story to tell from their journey of becoming a wrestler, the different characters that they've portrayed throughout their career, finally finding success, both stumbling due to addictions, and then depending on which one, the success rate they had coming back. Now, the first one is Dustin Rhodes, whether it be struggling as the natural to finding the Gold Dust character, to the infamous Seven storyline from WCW, to his troubles with drugs and TNA as Black Rain, to finally where he's at now as the natural coaching in AEW. My second choice is Raven. Through all the different characters he's had and various success rates and finally, you know, hitting his stride in ECW and becoming kind of a cult legend classic sort of revered by many uh, as the Raven character. I just think both would make tremendous stories told on screen. Uh, Tell me what you think on who you'd like to see as them. Thanks. Wyatt from Cali. Another call about our our, uh, biopics. This is not a wrestling podcast, but God, have we stumbled onto something? It's you just Freudian slip there, Scott. You just said this is not a wrestling podcast. <laughs> it's not. It's a movie <laughs> podcast now. We got two calls about it. We've got um, several calls about this. We've got this in our Discord. Yeah. People just keep talking about it. So yes, I'm sorry. This is no longer a wrestling podcast. It's now a movie podcast in which wrestlers are being talked about. Welcome in everybody, Pro Wrestling Paskies. Um, pro wrestling movie Palskis. Uh, this, uh, I don't necessarily have off the top of my head casting for these. These are both good options. I think that Raven is a harder sell for me. I feel like Raven is a character, is, is like a, not a character, but like a person who you would do a, a movie loosely based on his life and find ways to dramatize it a little bit more. Whereas I definitely think Dustin's struggles are more of a made for TV movie off the bat. His is his is easily done, but I think what you tap into with Raven is nineties grunge. Yeah. He, sure. The 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 rich kid, the like basically what he sells that wasn't present, or we see it in the rest of the world, and then in wrestling it's well here, I'm gonna take this here because in the world of the eighties, right? Like every it's Hogan, right. it's the big larger in life guys, but then here's a guy who goes like uh uh-uh. uh taking it all down i'm grunge i'm indie i'm alternative and the world doesn't understand me and i'm gonna be fucking different i think there's some appeal to that to the masses sure. with that you know i guess the the question is is like we're both we're t- we're talking about that in like the world of kayfabe wrestling where we go like yeah that worked for that but what what if we're doing a biopic it has nothing to do with the characters they're playing that's to do with the people they are and like is that it ju- is that a massive juxtaposition to who raven really is and if so, is that the story like or is it just, you know, is it like is it is it a story about like somebody capitalizing on a movement that they don't represent? And it's about like that sort of tragedy of, you know, uh, of living a life and living a character that you aren't and capitalizing it, and maybe exploiting it. You know, like what's the, what's you know, I guess that's the thing is I just don't know. Enough I, about I, Raven's I, I, would, I would say you you f- focus on the guy, Scott Levy, I believe is his, is right. his actual name. And you take him and you go, I want to be in this world, but the world of the eighties was giants. And now I'm in the nineties and now the nineties are different. This is a different era. This is when I can break in. This is when I can do something. He's Scotty Polo. He's the Scotty Flamingo. Um, 
it's these goofy things and he's seeing this air and he's going, this is not what the nineties are supposed to be. Like, this is dumb. Like, I don't like what this is. What, what are the nineties? What are, what am I, what, what can I bring to wrestling that is right. of this time frame? Like, what is the world and finding that grunge and then, and then from that perspective, right? Like he changes right. yeah, wrestling. Cause he, he sees, what the world is sees Nirvana sees all that shit sees comics. He's the guy who's bringing in nerd weird culture stuff. Right. Yeah. Before it was cool to do that. Yeah. He was the, he was like the Xavier woods of his time. You know what? Yeah. You're a hundred percent right. Yeah. Um, alternatively, the Dustin story I think isn't a Dustin story. I think it's a family drama and I think it starts with Brandy, the boys, <laughs> Randy? Brandy. Oh, Brandy. God. I think you said Randy. And I was like, what? I was like, wait, what Joe family Manganiello do you think I'm shows about? up. Yeah. Um, I think it starts with the boys growing up with this powerhouse icon of a father. And it's about their journeys. And I think you end it before the three of them are in a main event or in or in the match together where they win the tag titles with their dad by their side. And it ends up being about like this family unit and each of them struggling with identity. And it's a story about how our identity is our family. And it's not, we can all be individuals, but also we can all be Rhodes's. And it's about like all of the characters. Cause I feel like if you just make just a movie about Dustin, it's going to be hard to not, it's going to be hard to not uh, wa- like wash over the like homophobia of the era with gold dust. It's going to be hard to sort of like, portray that in a way that doesn't feel like why are we rooting for these people again? Why? You know, like I think it's, it would, it'd have to be very fictionalized would be my guess. Don't you want a trilogy? Oh no, no, I don't <laughs> No, Definitely not. Um, the Rhodes trilogy, but yeah, we'll have to revisit this topic is clearly the answer to all of these questions is we will be revisiting topics. We'll take note of all of this stuff and we make and, a movie uh, about Brandy and we're going to make a movie about Brandy Rhodes called who am I? today no no really i'm not sure it changes every week brandy Rhodes, the brandy road story um all right thanks to everybody for hanging out and listening with us once again if you want to call the hotline 747-666-5606 or send a voice memo to hotline at pwpalskis.com congrats to the new pwp champ mass llama aka spitz and congrats to uh gilbert short on a successful title reign um in successful in that you won one and then you gave us a watch along and then we watched it and you got a shirt and now we're moving on from you um please join us in the discord it is a super fun community that's completely free and not attached to the patreon in any capacity but it's a great place to hang out and watch wrestling with people and just talk wrestling and make friends all of that for free available on pwpalskis.com click the discord link while you're there you can click the patron become a patron get access to the pre-show get access to the watch along wednesdays the entire back catalog, hundreds and hundreds of hours of pro wrestling, Palski's entertainment, uh, a lot of evergreen stuff there. It's not a ton of like, hey, let's let's recap Survivor Series from 19, you know, uh, or from, uh, you know, 2019. It's not a lot of that. It's all evergreen conversations uh, that you can listen to whenever you want. And that will still be fun and entertaining. Uh, what else, Scott Narver? You can find us on social media at PW Palski's. And uh, I think that's it. We got to thank our current Patreon Palskis. So thank you to all of our current PWP Palskis. Uh, nope. That's that's the P. ATM machine. Thank you to all of our Palskis. Uh, and thank you to our Patreon Palskis. We're the only place where we can get a retribution name. And possibly very soon. I know Jake said it'd be this week, but mm, Maximum Male Models needs I think I said next time. week. Did I say next week? I think I said next week. Yeah, that last week. No, that was at the beginning of this episode. No way. Yeah, I know. Our time is a flat circle, but that was the beginning of this episode that I said next week. I Who knows? Time is a flat circle. <laughs> Uh, but either way, they need some time. They need some brewing and it's a possibility. I keep on saying you're interested and it's likely to happen. But right now, 
Thank you to AJ0314, aka Binary, Alex Pierce, aka Figs, Alice Raider, aka Invasion, Andrea Beeler, aka Pollen Hate, Brian Holloway, aka Thundervoid, Gilbert Short, aka Goliathon, Jumbo Pepper, aka Tongburn, Mast Llama, aka Spitz, aka The New. PWP Champ, Michael Beltran, aka Limestone, Miguel Diaz, aka Bipod, Tim Bemis, aka War Trek, Tim Redbeard, aka Blood Fuzz, Tina Keys, aka Lockup, Tom Hader, aka Cupid, Tony Griggs, aka Big Griggs, and Zach Iafuso, aka Fusebox. Thanks to each and every one of you for your continued support. Find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jake Lloyd Bacon. Scott Narver is at Scott Narver. Thanks again. It's always a blast hanging out with you, the Pro Wrestling Powskis. Classical mythologies have shaped the very world we live in. Yeah, whatever. I don't have time for dense, dusty old books, Paul. Great. Well, that's what podcasts are for. Oh, good point. Join me, Paul, as I teach my best friend and improv comedy partner, Sarah, all about mythology on Myth Understood. Mythology is frequently explicit, obscene, violent, and bizarre, though, right? Yeah. So there's a lot to joke about and improvise along the way? Yes. Oh. So come for the mythology and stay for the absurdity on Myth Understood. Available now at MythUnderstoodPodcast.com and your podcast platform of choice. It's Myth Understood. Dragon Wagon.